Hi, this is Alan Gilbert, Technical Specialist with Autodesk. And we're continuing our Overlay and Widening Custom Subassembly video series. The next step we're ready for is the geometric definition of the subassembly. We're in Subassembly Composer. We defined our target per parameters, our overlay existing surface, our horizontal targets, and all of our input parameters, which you can take a look at in the previous video. So now we're ready to lay out the geometry. So let's start with the first point by dragging the point out. This is going to be point one. Point code. I'm going to use the input parameter you can see over on the right, point code. For the type, it's going to be delta x on the surface. And so our delta x will be zero. Our target surface, which we define as a target parameter, will be whatever our overlay EG is set during corridor definition. And we could do an offset target, but we're not going to here. We'll just let it ride at the origin of the assembly. So that one looks good. Let's go to our next point. I'm going to turn the link automatic link off. I like to do the links at the end. So point code, we'll do point code again. This is going to be delta x on surface. Delta x is going to be our lane width parameter, input parameter, surface target because it is on the surface. This is the two that we're defining the computed slope from, so it's computing wherever this point ends up, the middle of the assembly, and wherever this point two ends up. We did define an offset target, so if we have an EOP, we will allow that to override, which we defined here in target parameters. Okay, so we can go ahead and do our computation for our output parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to set an output parameter. Define that. Our output parameter we're going to put this into is computed slope. Again, which we defined here as an output parameter. Now, on the if you go into the help file here, you can see how to cal calculate your generic expressions. You can see real quickly how to get the slope between two points, but I'm just going to type it in here. P1 dot slope 2, open parentheses, quotes, point 2. Okay, you can see the warning sign went away. So we're saying, okay, give me that I want to move my edge pavement edge of shoulder just so you can see that because we told P2 that it can be overridden by EOP so I can move those just by grabbing the line. But now I have my computed slope. It's going to drop it into this computed slope parameter that I can use later in this subassembly or in assembly or subassemblies down the line when we define the assembly object in the corridor. So now let's go ahead and place our point three. Drag that out. So this is going to be the edge of shoulder point for existing edge of shoulder. Point codes, we'll just call that again point code. And this is going to be a slope delta x. And so this is going to be the wedge, the formation of the wedge. And we want this to be from point two. And for the slope, we want it to just grab that output parameter slope, which is called computed slope. So if I just say, okay, I want it to be computed slope. It's going to grab whatever the slope is computed there and throw it into this slope value. So my delta x is going to be shoulder width 
input parameter and an offset target it can be offset by the edge of shoulder if present so elevation is going to be automatically done by that computed slope offset target is available and everything else is good so let's go with our next point take the link off for now this is going to be we're going to go down to the bottom of the wedge so I'll do point code here also did I do that one yep and this is going to be delta x on surface because we want this to be the bottom of the wedge to so go down and find the surface point so we close that wedge up and we're going to go from point 3 delta x offset is 0 we want to be directly under but for the elevation we want to grab the overlay eg which is our target parameter no we don't need an offset target because its offset is going to be constrained to p3 so overlay eg that's good so now we have our wedge defined so now let's do our link and shape codes so we're going to drop a link in this is just going to be from p1 to p2 and it's going to be link sorry this is going to be top link code could be datum also again I'm just forcing top here just to make it easy just assuming that's all I need this will be from P P2 P3 it'll be a top link code drop another link in it'll be from P2 P4 and uh, we could call this datum link code if we like we don't really need it because we didn't we didn't do datum with the others I just I have datum available so we'll just leave the link code all so let's just say the top was our interest if any and then the last link code will go from P3 to P4 again we don't need a top on that one either again it's hard to see because the wedge doesn't show up because of our EG surface but we'll see it shortly so now the shape code so we'll do L4, L3 L and L2 so that will represent our wedge and my shape code will be shape code so I can key that in so I think we're good wedge 10 I'll save this as wedge 10 PKT and that concludes the subassembly composer portion the next video will move over to Civil 3D.